together. The church is better together. Across boundaries and borders, beyond walls and notions, we're part of something far more powerful, far more potent than any of us could ever fully imagine or dream. A mission far bigger than any of us could ever accomplish on our own. We exist to make Jesus known. And in that pursuit, we become the best version of who God created us to be. A reflection of his love, his truth, his grace, his hands, his feet. One in mission, one in heart, one in love for Jesus and people. Arms locked to serve, give and show the world his love, which has no equal. And when we do, God goes before us. Hope rises, people turn their feet to Jesus. Families grow stronger, communities come together. Lives forever change for the better, victory is won. This is church, this is together, this is who we are. It's what we were made for. And all the glory goes to the one who makes it all possible. Jesus, to his name be all the glory, honor, and praise. Welcome to the movement, 2,000 years in the making. Welcome to church. Pancakes or crave? What do you want? Crave. Crave? Really? But the, br the brownie version. I know, but the syrup is so... Oh, hey, everybody. Hi. How are you? Welcome to church where you are. We are so glad that you are joining us today. You know, we've got people from California to the Carolinas. California to Carolina. Texas to Wisconsin. Texas to Wisconsin. Yes, people all over the place doing this church where you are experience. So do us a favor. Say hi to somebody in the chat. Say right? hi to somebody in the chat. Say hi, please. Let's say hi. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we've got a host team here, a group of people that are here to make your experience great today. They're here to answer any questions that you have about our church. Pray for you today. If you need prayer, we're They'll just... pray for you. They will. We're really glad that you're here today. Hey, listen, one announcement before we get into today's service is uh, this coming Monday, August the 7th, starts the 21 days of prayer. The 21 days of prayer. Yes. <laughs> and so we're going to be taking 21 days together and we're going to be building that habit of conversations with God on a daily basis. Get this, over 1,400 people. 1,400 people. That's right. Over 1,400 people are in our 21 Days of Prayer Facebook group. So do us a favor. Share it up with your friends. Share it. Invite people in. Invite them. It's going to be so, so good. You'll never find it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we've got a great service plan for you today. Some worship and a message from Pastor Brian. We're really excited that you're here. We're so excited. So thank you so much for joining us today here at Church Where You Are. Let's worship. I was buried beneath my shame Who could care You call 
all you've done We sing great are you Lord You overflow with praise And we sing great are you Lord We sing great And we sing great are you Lord It's your breath and it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only you know when we sing every week together um it really is an expression of our gratitude and our love back to God. That's the purpose by which we worship and, and why we always encourage you to, to sing out in your living room with your family, your friends, or wherever you are. Just because, again, uh, we think it's a worthwhile thing to give God the glory that he's due. Obviously, there's been so many ways that God has been good to us in our lives. And when we worship, we're remembering those things. We're, we're taking time to remember and say thank you to God for all of the blessings, all of the amazing ways that he loves and takes care of our needs in life. So we're going to continue our worship now through a time of giving. And this is a time when, when we affirm our trust in God as the provider and the giver of every good thing in life. You know, the Bible says that everything that is good comes from the Father above, that God is the giver of all good things in our life. And so that's why uh, here at Church Where You Are, we see giving as worship. Um, the, the life that we have, the breath that we have, um, the job that we have, the provision that we have in life, we believe wholeheartedly that God has blessed us with all of it for the purpose of being a blessing in the life of another. And, uh, you know, that's one of the things that we love to do. You know, even this week, um, we, we visited a bakery, a local bakery, um, again, a, a bakery called Donation Bakery. And uh, this bakery has a heart for serving the community. So Pastor Brian stopped by, grabbed some bread and dropped it off at the Jackson Interfaith Shelter. I'll tell you, it's just, it's an honor that we get to serve in this way. It's the little things that make a big, big difference. So uh, as you prepare to give today, I just would encourage you to just keep that in mind and know that God is using your generosity to make a difference in the life of another. That's the reason we give week in and week out here at Church Where You Are. You can give today primarily in two ways. First off, you can use your mobile device right now and text an amount to 84321. Again, you can send a text with your mobile device with an amount to 84321. If it's your first time giving via text, uh, there's a little bit of setup, but after that first initial gift, giving each week will be as easy as sending a text. You can also use our brand new Church Where You Are app. Right there on the home screen, when you open the app, there's a give button. Down to the bottom right, you can set up reoccurring giving, one-time giving. Um, all of it is, is easily accessible right there through the app. Again, a little bit of setup. But each week, you can give right there through our app. As you prepare to give in whatever fashion that you're able to participate, let's pray for that giving, that God would bless it, he would use it, he would make Jesus known through our giving today. And I want to pray for all of those that are so faithful to give and support to make a difference in the life of another, to give to the mission here at Church Where You Are, that God would bless your life today for the blessing that you are to another. Will you pray with me? Well, God, thank you so much, first off, for the opportunity to worship you. Thank you so much that uh, we live in a country where we can worship you freely, where we can um, lift up your name and give you honor and praise and glory that you're due. God, we thank you today for all the ways that you've blessed our life, all the provision um, again, all, all of the ways that you've been good to us, God, we see your goodness all around. And so today with glad and sincere hearts, we bring our gifts back to you and we ask God that you would bless them. We ask God that you would use them. We ask God today that, 
through our giving today that someone would come to know who Jesus is. And God, I pray today, um, as one of the pastors of all these incredible people, I pray that you would bless their lives for the blessing that they are to another. God, as they give, uh, you would just let them know um, that you so appreciate it and that you have big plans to use it to bring glory to your name. We give you all the honor, all the praise in this and everything we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on. And everybody said, amen. Why do we give? We give to make a difference, to touch hearts and change lives. We give to feed the hungry, care for the sick, and comfort those in need. We give to show Jesus to our neighbors, our community, and the world. We give as an act of worship to a God who has given everything. We give because we are the church, the body of Christ, called to be a light in the darkness, a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. We are the hands and feet of Jesus, sharing the hope of the gospel. This is why we give. of God is like yeast, hidden in a lump of dough. You might not see its influence, but it's changing everything. Hey everybody, I'm Brian, one of the pastors here at Church Where You Are. I would love to know where you're checking in from today, so let us know in the chat. We've got live hosts in there, and they're on the ready today to help you get those questions answered, like probably the one that's at the top of your mind why is Brian in a bakery? Well, I'm always in a bakery, <laughs> seriously. Uh, hey, special thank you to Donation Bakery in Hanover, Michigan. I went to college with this dude, Aaron Cole. He's, he's an artist, but he'd tell you that great artists aren't born, they're bred. The bread puns, they're gonna happen uh, when you yeast expect them. <laughs> all right, all right. I will get serious. I can hear my kids probably telling me right now in the chat, stop, dad, stop. Anyways, bread is mentioned close to 500 times in the Bible. So this was bound to happen eventually that I was going to end up preaching from Aaron's bakery. He knows it. 
He's on Facebook and Instagram, Donation Bakery. Give the guy some love. He's a great baker serving in Jackson, Lansing, and Hillsdale. And, and he also has our new app, Church Where You Are. Church is people, everybody. Church is people. People like Aaron, me, and you. It's, it's bigger than a Sunday. So come find out what that looks like and download the Church Where You Are app today. All right, so I'm going to stop loafing around here and uh, we're gonna get going. Uh, Church Where You Are, we've got a new series. It's kicking off this month in August. Here we are, and we're gonna set the table right here today as we dig into the long and the short of it, parables of the Bible. So I love uh, what the YouTube channel, The Bible Project, is doing, helping people experience the Bible, to really experience it as a unified story that leads to Jesus. So check out this video uh, they created to introduce the power of parables. Jesus of Nazareth was a master teacher, and some of his most well-known teachings are told in short stories called parables. Yeah, like the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant who was looking for pearls, and when he found the ultimate pearl, he sold everything so that he could buy it. Must have been some pretty amazing pearl. Or the kingdom of God is like a tiny mustard seed that a farmer planted in his garden. It grew and became a huge tree, and birds came to perch in its branches. And that's a beautiful image, but what does it mean? Exactly. Jesus didn't tell parables to make everything clear. Rather, he wanted to provoke the imagination and invite people to see what God is doing in the world from a new perspective. So let's talk about how to read the parables of Jesus. Now there's many great teachers that throughout history have used stories to teach students about morality, religion, philosophy. But Jesus didn't use his parables to teach abstract religious or moral ideals. He said that his parables were about himself and his mission. His mission, which was to announce that the kingdom of God was arriving on earth as it is in heaven. Right. So in Jesus' day, the Israelites were ruled by the Roman Empire. But their scriptures promised that one day their God would come to rule his people as king. And so many Israelites wanted to revolt against Rome and fight for their freedom. And this is what some people thought of as the kingdom of God. Exactly. But Jesus was a poor traveling prophet, healing the sick, inviting people to follow him. And he said that this was the arrival of God's kingdom. And that didn't fit people's expectations. Right. And so Jesus used some parables to help people imagine that his small movement was the arrival of God's kingdom. Oh yeah, like the parable that the kingdom of God is yeast hidden in a lump of dough. And you might not see its influence, but it's going to change everything. Jesus also told parables about the upside down values of God's kingdom, about how the least important people in the world are actually the most important people to God, especially those who are poor and of low status. Yeah, like the parable about the business owner who hired workers throughout the day, in the morning, later in the day, and even towards the end of the day. And when it was time to pay everyone, he paid them all the same wage. Right, Jesus is showing how money and status are irrelevant to God, who offers his generous mercy to everybody. Now, not all of the parables have happy endings. Some are really intense. Yes, Jesus stood in the tradition of Israel's prophets, who also told parables to criticize Israel's leaders because they mistook their kingdom for God's. So Jesus warned the leaders of his day, if they don't accept his offer of God's kingdom, they're headed for destruction. Yeah, like the parable of the landowner who built a wonderful vineyard and he expects it to produce fruit. Yes, Jesus gets this parable from the prophet Isaiah, but then he adapts it. Right, and so the landowner appoints managers to take care of this vineyard. And at harvest, he sends servants to collect the fruit but those managers kill the servants. And so the landowner sends his own son to confront the managers and they kill him too. And so Jesus asked the people around him, what do you all think this landowner should do? Oh, he's gonna punish those managers and hire new ones. Jesus knew that if Israel kept on their current path, they would be destroyed by Rome. And so in parables like this, he's forcing people to make a decision about his offer of God's kingdom. Are people going to reject him, ignore him, 
or trust and follow him. Now, if this message of God's kingdom is so important, why cloak it in parables? Why not be more clear? Well, through riddles and parables, Jesus could make really bold claims that revealed truth to people who were open-minded. For those who have ears to hear, they could ponder it and go deeper. But the parables would also conceal his message from those who were against him so that he could buy more time. Buy time for what? Well, Jesus was preparing his closest followers for the greatest surprise yet. Jesus claimed that Israel's God was coming to rule over his people not through coercion or violent force, but through self-giving love as he was going to die for their sins. But his death wasn't the end. Right. He said that his death would be like a tiny seed buried in the ground, but then it would grow and produce a crop with many seeds. So these parables, they explain who Jesus was and what he was up to. And the gospel authors have preserved these parables so that now every generation of Jesus' followers can read and ponder them. And imagine how God's kingdom is still at work even today. Right. These ancient parables are still full of new surprises and challenges. They're like a storehouse packed with treasures, some that are new, some that are old, and it's all just waiting to be discovered. And there you have it. The parables that Jesus told are like a storehouse packed with treasures. They're just waiting to be discovered, and that's where we're going to come in this month, guys. I'm excited for you. Hey, let's go into the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13. Will you read with me? All these things Jesus said to the crowds in parables. Indeed, he said nothing to them without a parable. This was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, I will open up my mouth in parables. I will utter what has been hidden since the foundation of the world. Matthew 13, 34 through 35. I saw that word hidden. Did you catch that? We have to pay attention to that word. Real, bold claims that revealed truth to people who were open-minded. Parables are, are like a storehouse packed with treasure, as we saw in the video. Now, we're in a bakehouse, a bakehouse, though, that is packed with bread, and there's a treasure there. There's treasure here. It's small. It's very common. It's often unnoticed in the ingredient list in bread, and it reveals truth about the kingdom of God, and it's our first parable to open up this brand new series. I'll say it again, the kingdom of God is like yeast hidden in a lump of dough. You might not see its influence, but it's changing everything. So now before we dive into that lump of dough, let me just say that these next four weeks, you're gonna hear reference to the kingdom of God. It's gonna be actually mentioned quite a bit regardless of the parable we're talking about. And that's because parables were unveiling this kingdom. The kingdom of God is simply his domain. It's, it's his rulership or his, his will being worked out through us. Now in our current age, the kingdom of God is spiritual, okay? It, it exists in the hearts of believers. God is, an, is invisible to our eye, but he is present and manifests himself through us, those who have turned their feet toward him. Later on, though, in the future, the kingdom will manifest physically when the Lord returns visibly and establishes his throne here on this earth. Now, we're not there yet. So you and I, we, we get to partner with God to advance his spiritual kingdom here in the present. Speaking of you and I, we're we're right there in the middle of those two creations you see before you. Our old broken creation is being redeemed. Now Jesus, our creator, is ready to show us the mysteries of his kingdom working in that space, that middle space that sets up right here, right here. Feel that, feel that heart right here. Put your hand over your heart. That's where he sets up his space. 
It's a common rhythmic beat, probably unnoticed, really, until I just brought it to your attention. The creator of this mechanism, he wants you to know him, and he'll give you the eyes to see the unseen and reveal his mysteries. We'll begin to see how he works in the small details of our lives and, and those around us. That's part of the story. I think uh, we need this kind of encouragement today. I really do. I, I don't know about you. Maybe you feel like he's forgotten you. Uh, you aren't seeing the things that you expected would change about you or your circumstances. And I get that. Um, I think that's a pretty common feeling. Sometimes, though, we just forget. We forget just how far he really has brought us along in this journey. And that's okay. It starts small, like a yeast. The change is gradual. And my hope for you today is that that small, unseen space, that little tiny piece, those little changes start to be revealed to you. I pray that you, you stay, to, stay close to Jesus through this all, that you don't have to look and, and imagine it's got to turn out a certain way. It's, it's a small, mic, just a microbe of yeast, the leaven. It makes amazing changes. So we're going to read this first parable today, and it's one of the smallest. It's only a sentence, actually, in the whole uh, passage here. So let's go to our first, our second session here in Matthew chapter 13. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven that a woman took and hid in three measures of flour till it was all leavened. There it is. There's our first parable. It's fascinating, really, if you think about it. The yeast, it's, it's, it's a tiny granular fungus, uh, unimpressive and seemingly insignificant to the visible eye, yet it has a big impact. It enlarges the flower and it transforms the dough. You know, the kingdom is, is like that, in fact. Um, this is how Jesus entered the world. He was hidden, right? Remember the scene in the manger? He was hidden as a baby in a manger, blended into society as he grew, largely unnoticed, really, across the ancient world. Nazareth, where he grew up, uh, was estimated to be a town of around 400 people. So when he began his ministry, I mean, he started... Uh, with a band of ragtag guys. He was 30 years old. It took this long. And that ministry began with the call of a few fishermen, some undistinguished followers, small scale. What did they do? They hit the back roads right at the start. Now, Jesus, he could have, to begin his ministry, he could have traveled to Jerusalem, chosen the 12 disciples from the best and the brightest, the, the purest, the highest quality ingredients. But he didn't do that, did he? No, the cosmic renewal plan of the world would begin with the small, random, and hidden and would expand to the point that it would impact the whole earth. So the nature of yeast, as small as it is, is to grow and change whatever it contacts. And what happens? What happens? Those common ingredients, sugar, water, flour, expand into something altogether new, useful, and life-giving. And we do too, we do, we, we change, just like the yeast acting on the flour. Something tiny becomes large and mighty. When we turn our feet to the Lord, oftentimes we try to look for proof. Proof, you know, the results of what that work in our heart looks like. But remember, let's remember, just like the yeast acting on the dough, this is a process and you can't rush it. Now we live in an instant results kind of society. That's what we buy, that's what we watch, that's what we compare ourselves to. We want the undeniable victory, the visible results, we want them right away. But more often when it comes to the kingdom of God, our spiritual life, it begins with a tiny speck that we can miss if we're too focused on our current circumstance. And it begins with a tiny transforming speck. Again, let me show you. It can show up like reading a Bible verse and sharing it with a friend. Talking with God when you're on your walk. Sharing a prayer request with someone. Maybe it's finally noticing that unnoticed person. You see, these little microbes, these agents of change, they, they work into our being. 
and they alter us over time until we finally realize God's spirit has been transforming us into a large and mighty force for him. So let me show you in scripture. Turn with me. But whenever someone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. For the Lord is the spirit. And wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord who is spirit makes us more and more like him as we are changed into his glorious image. 2 Corinthians 3, 16 through 18. thousand small decisions right in the middle of making those choices is where the change happens choosing to involve him in the small things of our life for 5 10 15 20 years course correction look at this passage in psalm 119 i used to wander off until you disciplined me but now i closely follow your word again one tiny victory at a time leads to a large and mighty kingdom growth. And these two ingredients are irreplaceable. A follower of Jesus cultivates faithfulness and obedience over time. As I said in the beginning, some of you may look at your lives and think, man, I've got a long way to go. Stay the course, stay faithful and obey him in the small things. Let's look to scripture again. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ, Philippians 1, 6. Hey, just remember, it's, it's not you who brings the transformation. It's God acting on you, just like yeast acts on flour. We try to go big, don't we? We try to show God how grand we can be for him, but It's the small, common, unnoticed spaces that he works in us. That's the kingdom. That's how it becomes large and mighty. We just have to be willing to let him transform us one small moment to the next. Small spiritual exchanges lead to large life changes. So he did it with the 12. He started small, one small exchange after another. And that took time, guys, but it changed the world with those 12. So where do we go from here? We're going to keep it simple. We're not going to mess with the recipe card this time. Let's hide his word in our heart and then let's start living that out. Okay, together. Here's Here's the time-tested practice that began two millennia ago, 2,000 years ago, as the kingdom of God was expanding. Read with me. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Acts 2, 42. They were cultivating faithfulness and obedience to God, and they were doing that in the small, common places of their homes. Guys, they didn't have a a big, highly visible church building to gather in, but they had each other. They had each other. It would be in those small places, those common spaces of everyday life that God was going to exchange their fear, their insecurity, and their uncertainty with the apostles' teaching shared meals and prayer. Devotion is a thousand small decisions of making the right choices. Over time, choosing to involve him in the small things of your life, that's what it's all about. And that's what they did. It's the same recipe. Open his word and pray and get around others doing the same. on an app. 
next to in verse 47, you're going to discover that the Lord added to their number. It was he who added to their number day by day, those who were being saved. Remember guys, he is the yeast. He's the agent of change acting on us to bring the results. Our job, remember, is to remain faithful and obedient to him in the small things. So over the next 21 days, starting tomorrow, we'll be joining one another in prayer. It's on the recipe card. Little decisions each day for 21 days to listen, to listen for that still small voice from the Lord. We'll be opening up his word in the Bible app. We'll be showing up in a common virtual space. And what will we be doing? Praying together. We're going to take our independence and our focus on ourselves, that want of instant, and we're going to exchange it for a dependence on God and relying on his timing. Do you want to see those small, seemingly hidden ways that, that God is working in his kingdom? I challenge you then to go on this 21-day adventure with us. An invitation to do so is in the chat. Um, it might be in the description of this video as well. Go ahead and accept it there. God is, is ready to change us from the inside out, just like yeast acting on dough. And he's, he's going to use our prayers to show the world what he can do with the small, common, and unseen. The kingdom of God is like yeast hidden in a lump of dough. You might not see its influence, but it's changing everything. And it changes us. Let's turn to scripture. But thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and manifests through us the sweet aroma of the knowledge of him in every place, 2 Corinthians 2, 14. Just like the sweet smell of fresh bread, we're going to become that aroma of Christ. And we're gonna do that, everybody, together. We're gonna do it in the small, common, and unseen places in our lives. The prayer we're waiting on at the stoplight that we have with God, the conversation, it matters. Sharing a scripture verse with a friend, the small decisions led by our king, the kingdom of God is gonna move in a large and mighty way. We're gonna triumph with each small decision that we make, and it's going to change the world. So the biggest uh, decision you'll ever make is deciding to turn your feet towards Jesus to welcome him into your heart, to acknowledge him as your savior, and then working that out in faithful obedience. Jesus was God made man. He came to bring God's rulership and God's sovereignty back to a rebellious world by saving it from sin. That's the kingdom of God here, right now amongst us. Do you want to enter that kingdom? If you do, can you pray alongside me? Father, um, I come before you and I acknowledge that I fall short. I've missed you in the small, common places of my life. And I want to align my life with you. Thank you for coming to this world to rescue me, to die on a cross for my sin, to pay the penalty of sin that I owed to a perfect God to wipe it clean. Thank you for doing that for me. I acknowledge that. I believe that God raised you from the dead to be my deliverer, my redeemer, and I wanna walk according to your will in faithful obedience. I'm not gonna do it perfectly, but I want to begin that journey with you. If you prayed that prayer, um, I would love for you to text turn my feet to 94000. It's, it's not about the words that you said. It's about the intent of your heart. Uh, we're going to work that out in faithful obedience together. Uh, again, I would just encourage you to join us in our 21 days of prayer plan. Let's go to prayer right now and ask God to bless that. Lord, thank you for being with us today. Uh, thank you for guiding our, direct, our, our conversation here. Lord, we're expecting you to show up in large and mighty ways, and it will be in the moments that we take pause at the stoplight to say a prayer, 
Lord, to talk to you, Lord, to copy that verse that you've put on our heart and then to send it out, to call a brother or sister, to be an encourager. Lord, we're expecting you to move in the prayers of your people. We know that you hear us and you're with us even today. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, that's it, everybody. We'll see you back next week. We'll dive into another parable. There's going to be treasure hidden. Let's get digging. See you guys next week.